Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to College Football Week 1 Picks. Finally here, I'll be honest with you, after the Super Bowl, I was kind of like, you know, and I'm okay with football being gone for a while. I was just kind of tired of football, and I was fine, but by the time... August rolled around. It's kind of like, all right, I'm kind of excited for football to come back. And then there were some high school games I got to go to. And and now we're ready for college football this week, NFL's next week, and we will be doing weekly picks, uh, obviously, every single week. Um, I plan to have college picks up on Monday, NFL Tuesday. I think that's how we're going to do it. I don't know, Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday there will be NFL and or college picks. Um, but I'm so excited for this year. There Now, this board is jam-packed with information. There are 25 games, 11 in each of the rows. Then our three featured games. We go over the featured games at the end. Um, I've added the QBS Top 10. This is my personal Top 10 rankings each week. Now, this, I made a video about my preseason Top 10. And that's my preseason top 10 right there. And at the end of the video, I am going to show you my playoff, my end of the year playoff picks. I'll do that at the end after we get done with all the games. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. Um, a lot of games to go over here. Let's kick it off with Sid. Oh, last week, week zero, I made five picks, went four and one. Uh, yeah. Um, Got all of them right there. Easy games besides Illinois and Nebraska. I picked Nebraska and Illinois one. Also, we are going to be do introducing a new thing, and it's Clown of the Week in college football. Well, who won Clown of the Week this past week? Well, we had a few options. It was basically either UConn, because they got the absolute breaks beat off of them by Fresno State, or Nebraska. Folding to Illinois... And I know they beat you last year, and last year was the first time they had beaten Nebraska in Lincoln in the last 97 years, but come on. Scott Frost was supposed to be the savior at Nebraska, and he's just been an absolute failure. Um, so Scott Frost is your clown of the week. Um, get, just just has done a terrible job with that program since taking over. What is this, his fourth year? Come on, man. They should be contending, and they're just they're just not. But let's go to the picks. Coastal Carolina, supposed to have a very good season this year. They return almost everyone on a great defense. Um, great defense they had. And um, freshman quarterback Grayson McCall's back. Is that running back still there? Marable, he was a really good running back for Coastal Carolina. Um, they opened the season at home against Citadel. They're ranked for the first, they're the first time being ranked in the preseason in their program's history. I'll take Citadel. I'll take Coastal Carolina, although Citadel can give teams problems just because they run the option and they try to control the ball. But I think Coastal Carolina. Coastal Carolina kind of runs the option too sometimes. They they run McCall a lot. Um, but Coastal Carolina runs a fair bit of options, so I think they should be fine. Um, I think Coastal Carolina gets the win in that one. Here's a good group of five matchup. By the way, these the first the first three games are on Thursday, so tomorrow. Boise State and UCF, probably the two best group of five teams. As of recently, you can maybe throw Cincinnati in there because um, they've been good for a while. But between these teams, here's the thing. I think these two teams are pretty evenly matched when it comes to talent. The Hank Bachmeyer, Boise State's quarterback, is really good. But UCF still got their good quarterback, Dylan Gabriel. I think this is going to come down to who's at home. UCF's at home in Orlando. I think they end up uh, taking this win. Uh, I'll go 34-37. Now, here's one. I feel like a lot of you are going to question. Ohio State, right? The last two years, they were probably the second best team in college football. Maybe third best, behind Bama and Clemson. They lost Justin Fields. They lost Trey Sermon. They lost, um, who else did they lose? They lost a bunch of people on defense. All they really have is Olave and Garrett Wilson. They have two fantastic receivers, but... The quarterbacks, I don't really know how good they are. Who's that? That J who who's that one quarterback? Hold on. It's like JT Stroud or something. I think it's I think it's yeah, or CJ Stroud. There we go. CJ Stroud. 
yeah, I'm not sure how good that guy is. I'm going to go on and let me say he's going to be all right. Um, but here's the thing. Minnesota's got that really good running back, Muhammad Ibrahim, and P.J. Fleck knows how to get a team ready for a big game. First game of the season on a Thursday on the road, I think they're going to have some problems. I think Ohio State's going to run into some problems. They get the win close, very close. North Carolina and Virginia Tech. Don't know how great Virginia Tech is going to be this year. I'm assuming not very uh, the top 10 ranked Tar Heels are ninth in my poll. I think they're 10th in the AP poll. I don't think they should have any problems getting this win. Michigan State, Northwestern. Uh, Northwestern has beaten, or Michigan State has beaten Northwestern two years in a row. I think that comes to an end here. Northwestern finished, what, in the top 10 last year or close to the top 10? They won. I think who they beat in their bowl game. Did they beat Auburn in like the Outback Bowl or something? I think they did. Uh, they had a really good year last year, almost beat Ohio State. The only team they lost to the regular season with Michigan State. Michigan State's going to be bad, though. Like what? Rocky Lombardi, tra their quarterback transferred. Was Peyton Thorne going to start? I don't even know who Michigan State's going to have. They're not a very good team this year. So Northwestern should be able to get a win at home defensive battle. Now, this next game I think is interesting. Oklahoma at Tulane. Normally, the, little, the smaller school goes to the bigger school. But the fact that Oklahoma is going to be on the road, it's a little bit interesting to me. So I think Tulane's going to come out with an intensity, and this is obviously their most important game of the year. They win this game, season's a success. I'm not a huge Spencer Rattler guy. I'm just not. I don't think he's that great. And I think Oklahoma's a little bit overrated. Most people have them at number two or number one in their poll. I have them at five. Um, but I think that Oklahoma should be able to end up getting this win. Penn State and Wisconsin ranked matchup here. I'm going to go with Wisconsin. Don't really know how great Penn, Penn State was embarrassed. They were they were not good last year. They started off, what, 0-5? It was a rough year for Penn State. Um, Wisconsin, I think, is going to be able to get this win at home. De defensive battle, give me the Badgers. Fresno State and Oregon. Now, Fresno State looked like world beaters last week because they played UConn. Oh, my goodness, UConn is bad. Lost to Fresno 45-0. Now, I think Fresno State will give Oregon some problems just because they've played already. They've already gotten a game under their belt, so they're 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 already in the rhythm of things. Oregon, they haven't played yet. So I think since Fresno State's already in the rhythm of things, they can give Oregon a little bit of a scare. I think Oregon should win. I mean, I know Fresno State looked great last week, and I don't think Fresno State would be a horrible team. It was UConn. And it, the fact that UConn has to play Clemson this year is just scary to think about. Um... But I'll take Oregon. Indiana and Iowa. I went back and forth on who I wanted to pick for this game about eight different times. I I flipped who I wanted. I flipped who I picked a bunch of times. Now, Indiana, they returned 17 of 22 starters from last year, a uh, year when they almost beat Ohio State and had a very good uh, campaign. I'm going to take Iowa at home. This is a coin flip for me. I think Indiana is a better team, but the fact that it's on the road at Kinnick, that crowd is nuts. I think Iowa's going to get this one done close, but if Indiana and Michael Penix Jr. play the way we saw them play last year, they're going to be a threat this year. Honestly, my prediction for Indiana this season is 10-2. and two. They beat Ohio State. They lose to Cincinnati. I think Cincinnati's better than Ohio State. That's why I have them ranked higher. Cincinnati doesn't play this week, but, you know, that that is what it is. West Virginia and Maryland. I'm going to take Maryland. This is a coin flip for me. West Virginia, they had a really good defense last year, but their offense wasn't great. They lost some people on defense. It's, it was close. I'll take Maryland. Iowa State hosting Northern Iowa. Now, two years ago, these two played at Iowa State, and Northern Iowa took them to triple overtime. Yeah, uh, it was a great game. Iowa State ended up holding on. Iowa State is supposed to be really good this year. That man, Brees Hall, Brock Purdy, they are some bad MFs, man. I mean, they are some legit players. I think they're I think they're better than Oklahoma. Not a lot of people agree with me on that, but I think they're better than Oklahoma. And I'm going to take them, obviously, to beat Northern Iowa. Um, and I think they could be the favorites to win the Big 12. San Jose State and USC. Now, San Jose State went undefeated in the regular season last year. Best season ever in the history of the San Jose State, man. Um, then they lost to Ball State in the Arizona Bowl. But, hey, undefeated regular season for San Jose State. I don't know how many starters they return. I don't think it matters. USC should be able to win this game. 
Keaton Slovis, I'm not really on the Keaton Slovis train, but I think he's a pretty good player, and USC should be able to win this game. Oregon State coming down to West, from Corvallis to West Lafayette to play the Boilermakers of Purdue. This is a coin flip. Neither one of these teams is particularly great. Um, I'll take the home team. Give me Purdue. Um, Kansas, or not, not Kansas State, Kent State um, playing Texas A&M. Now, Texas, I'm high on Texas A&M this year. I think they're going to be a really good team. I think they're going to give, they're going to give Bama a run for their money in the SEC West. It, in my opinion, the best game this year will be Alabama Texas A&M because that's going to decide who wins the SEC West and who's going to Atlanta for the SEC championship. I think that's going to be the most important game. Texas A&M will definitely be a competitor in that game. They're not just going to lie down and die and get blown out. LSU on the road against UCLA. UCLA looked great last week. It was because you beat you played Hawaii. LSU was a much better team. Um, they should be able to rebound from their pitiful season last year. They were bad last year. But um, they, a lot of people are talking about how UCLA is this great team. I don't see it. I'm going to take LSU. BYU and Arizona. Now, BYU lost a lot of people from last year. Obviously, they lost uh, Zach Wilson, that good receiver, Dex Milne. Is he still there? I think he's gone. Um, anyway, well, they're not going to be as good as they were last year, obviously. But Arizona is just, they're the worst team in the worst Power 5 conference. Doesn't mean they're the worst Power 5 team, but they're close. They're pretty bad. Nah, B BYU should be able to win. Florida Atlantic and Florida. I'm not a fan of Florida and Emroy Jones. I don't think Emroy Jones is a great player. Um, but, um... Florida should be able to beat Florida Atlantic. I know I'm saying I'm not high on a lot of teams. Like, I'm not high on Ohio State. I'm not high on Oklahoma. I'm not high on Florida or USC. I know I'm saying I'm not high on a lot of teams. There are teams that I am high on. I'm high on Iowa State, North Carolina, Texas A&M, Georgia, and Clemson. Those are the teams I'm high on. I know I'm saying I'm not high on a lot of teams. There are teams that I'm high on. I'm not just saying every team's bad. Um, but let's keep it going. This, if you want to, to just take a nap during a game, it would be Syracuse and Ohio. I don't know whose idea it was to schedule this game. Syracuse, you know, they had their run. You know, they, they beat Clemson that one game. Great. Ups, biggest win in Syracuse history. Um, and then they almost beat Clemson the next year. Um, they ended up barely losing the game. What, they, what were they, ranked in the top 10 at one point or something? Top 15? They were really good. And it's just been back to the normal for Syracuse. They they went, what, 1-9 last year. Um, they played Clemson at home one time and got blown out by 50 points. It's just been downhill for Syracuse. And Ohio is just your middle-of-the-road MAC team. I'll go with Ohio just because how often do they get to host a Power 5 team? Not often. And I think they're going to come out with an intensity and win this game. I don't know. This is a coin flip for me. I think Syracuse is favored by like one and a half. It's close. I'll take Ohio. Houston and Texas Tech. Give me Houston. I don't really have much of an explanation. Texas Tech is a middle-of-the-road Big 12 team. And Houston's usually pretty good. Give me the Cougars. Uh, Montana and Washington. I know Washington supports, uh, supports a pretty good defense this year. I've heard good things about that defense. I know they returned quite a few starters from last year. A guy on sports radio said he's they're making the playoff. I don't know what he's smoking, but um, he said Washington's making the playoff. I don't know. They should have no problems with Montana. Notre Dame and Florida State. Notre Dame wins. Notre Dame wins big. Florida State has just been an abject failure of a program ever since Jimbo Fisher left. I mean, they are just absolutely atrocious. Um, they might go winless this year. Two wins max. I mean, they're not a good team. Um, sorry, they're just not. Um, I think Notre Dame, who I'm not particularly high on. I'm never high on Notre Dame. You'll never hear me say, I'm high on Notre Dame this year. That will never be said out of my mouth. But they're just miles ahead of Florida State. No problems with Notre Dame here. They're going to get that win easily. Louisville and Ole Miss. This is an interesting one. Louisville, you never know what you're going to get with Louisville. You're either getting a pretty good 8-9 win bowl season or three wins, and they're just not doing anything. What season will we get from Louisville? No one knows. Um, but Ole Miss, I'm high on Ole Miss this year. They're, the, the lane train looks really good last year, scoring damn near 60 points a game. 
And I feel like they could upset some people in the SEC West, possibly in A&M or Alabama. Who knows? Maybe they beat LSU. No one knows. Um, but they could make some noise. I say they win, but they have no defense. They have no defense whatsoever, but their offense scores 60 points a game. I think they beat Louisville 62-41. I know that's a bit of a wild score, but, I mean, come on. All right. It's featured game time. Um, Louis, the Louisiana Raging Cajuns, in my opinion, the best team in Louisiana. I think they're better than LSU. The Raging Cajuns support Levi Lewis. Now, he is either a fifth-year senior or a sixth-year senior. Now, how is that, how is that possible, Will? How could he be a sixth? Well, last year didn't count because of COVID. I don't know. He might only be a fifth-year senior. I can't remember, but Levi Lewis, left-handed quarterback. He's really good. They had a really good running back. I can't remember his name, but they went into Ames, Iowa, and uh, knocked off Iowa State uh, to start the season. And didn't Iowa State only lose two games all year? They lost uh, Okay, they lost to Oklahoma in the SEC Championship, and I think they lost one other game in the regular season. I think they lost. Who did they lose to, like TCU or someone? I think they lost one game in the regular season besides Villa. But Louisiana Lafayette, not only did they beat them, they beat them, they beat them blind. They beat them 31-14. to 14. That game wasn't close. Um, and yet Iowa State was ranked ahead of Lafayette in every single poll you looked at the entire year. So I think this, so this team was really disrespected last year. They would have played for a conference title against Coastal Carolina, which was the only game they lost in the regular season. The only game they lost in the regular season – was to Coastal Carolina. They were going to play him in the conference championship, but that game got canceled. So this Raging Cajun team is really good. They're legit. They support a great defense and uh, some legit threats on the offensive side of the ball. Now, Texas. Now, Texas is usually good. Um, they're not back in terms of contending for a national title, but they're usually a respectable team. Um, they fired that joke of a coach, Tom Herman. Tom Herman, is him and Scott Frost are the same coach. Um, they both went, what, undefeated at their small school. Scott Frost went undefeated at UCF. He went undefeated at Houston. And then they both just completely failed at their Power 5 schools. Tom Herman was a lot better of a coach than Scott Frost, though. Um, Tom Herman, at least, what, did they beat George in the Sugar Bowl that one year? Yeah, they were at least decent. But they're bringing in a new coach in Steve Sarkeesian. Now, I think Sarkeesian will do some good things at Texas. I'm wearing a Texas shirt, not because I'm a huge Texas fan. But I might go there for college. And if I go there for college, I better hope Sarkeesian turns that program around. Because if I end up going to Texas, I'm not trying to watch a bad team all the time. Sorry. So I think Sarkeesian will do well. But in his first year, I don't know how well he's going to do. This is a raging Cajun team that is hungry for another up. So they did it last year. And I think last year's Iowa State team better than this year's Texas team. And I think this year's Raging Cajun team better than last year's Raging Cajun team. They're going to start the season ranked, and they're going to start the season with a big win on the road against the Longhorns. I think they pull it out in the end. I like what this team plays with. They play with a fire and intensity. They run the ball well. They have a great defense. I think the Raging Cajuns get it done. All right, next we have Miami and Alabama. Now, you ask anyone, they say Bama's winning by at least four scores. I'm not going to say they're wrong. I just think that they're not giving Miami enough credit. Miami, they've got Derek King coming back. And here's the thing. I like Derek King. Uh, I've been hard on him in the past, but he's looked really good so far at Miami. He didn't really have m many people around him, but Miami does return some starters. They're ranked 14th in the country for a reason. I'd probably have them around the 12, 13, 14 range as well. Now, Alabama, they will not be – everyone's saying they're going to be just as good as they were last year. Sorry to burst your bubble, they won't. Um, they're losing what? Mac Jones, Najee Harris, Devonta Smith, Jalen Waddell, Alex Leatherwood, Sertain, other people on defense. They're just not going to be as good. I know they got Bryce Young, and I know they all – I don't even know who their running back is, but their running back's always good. They're Alabama. I think Miami will hang around for a little bit in this game. I think, I think Miami is going to make this game competitive. But I think at the end, Alabama's offense is just going to wear them down, and I don't think they'll be able to keep up for the long haul. I think that Alabama will win, but Miami will not go down without a fight. I expect them to at least be somewhat competitive in this game. 
but I do think Alabama will come with a win. Miami wins this game, and I hope they do. I really hope Miami wins. This game, this season is just flipped upside down, and I really hope Miami can. I I want to see Miami get it done. I really want to see him get it done. But lastly, it's the game everyone's been waiting for, number three versus number five, number one and two in my poll. These are, I think, the two best teams in the country, Georgia and Clemson. I think they just they have stuff that the other teams don't. Uh, Georgia supports one of the best defenses of college football. Kirby Smart is a defensive wizard. He know he just know he knows defense. He was Alabama's defensive coordinator, I believe. Um, he just knows his stuff when it comes to the defensive side of the ball. But here's the thing: Georgia's not had a good quarterback since Matthew Stafford. They just haven't. Who do they have? Jack Fromm. Jake, Jake Fromm, racist, not a good quarterback. Um, and then they had, what, Stetson Bennett and Dewan Mathis. They weren't great. Jacob Easton, when he started, he was he was pretty good, but not good enough. This year, they have their savior. They have the guy that they need. JT Daniels, former five-star at USC. He got hurt at USC or whatever, so they came to Georgia and had some injury problems there. But near the end of the season, he looked terrific. He looked great near the end of the season. And I think he's the answer Georgia needs at quarterback. And they also had Zamir White, who's a legitimate NFL caliber running back. And they probably have four. Uncle Lou says they have four NFL caliber running backs. Not sure if they're all NFL caliber, but they're they're fine at running back. And they have good receivers, even with no George Pickens for the entire year. Um, which was which disappointed me. I liked George Pickens. Well, he threw that Georgia Tech's player's head into a wall. I mean, he I like George Pickens. He was great. I'm sad we're not going to be able to see him this year. But Clemson, who do they have? Well, they return a lot of starters besides Lawrence and ETN. They have DJ Uyunglele, which is how you say it. I'm just going to call him DJ. Um, I think, hear me out, I think he will be better than Trevor Lawrence. And the reason being is I think Trevor Lawrence was a little overrated. And DJ played way better against, okay, his first game, he barely beat Boston College. All right, it's his, it's his first game starting. Give him a little bit of a break. He didn't know he was going to be starting. When he had time to prepare in the game of the century against Notre Dame, he threw for damn near 500 yards. This guy's legit, and I think he'll be better than Trevor Lawrence. Um. Is, is that crazy for me to say? Probably. Um, but we'll have to see. I'm telling you, DJ is going to light the world on fire. These, I think, are the two best quarterbacks in college football, JT Daniels and DJ. One will win the Heisman. And I think it's going to be JT Daniels who wins the Heisman. He's my preseason Heisman pick. I'm really excited to see what this guy is going to do. Besides Clemson, Georgia's schedule is really easy. And so is Clemson. Clemson is usually easy. Sometimes they have to play a Miami or a North Carolina or Louisville or Florida State if they're good. But here's the thing. The loser of this game is going 11-1, and and the winner is going 12-0. and I think both will make the playoff. Now, Georgia's situ- if Georgia loses, I don't know if they'll make the playoff because they might lose to an Alabama in the SEC championship. If Georgia wins, they're making the playoff because even if they go 12-0, and if they lose in the ACC championship, they'll still get in. Clemson, I think, will make the playoff at whether they win or lose because they're, they're going to win their conference. Maybe a North Carolina or Miami could give them fits in the ACC title game. But my pick for this game is going to be Georgia. I really love Georgia this year. I think they're the team to beat. I think they've they've, they've shown me the most so far. And I think they're going to come into, I think, where is this game? Charlotte? I think it's in Charlotte. Um, and I think the Alabama game's in Atlanta, I think. I think it's in Atlanta. I think that Georgia's going to come out and win this game. I think they have more experience on their team. JT Daniels is about to start longer than DJ has. And I, I think it's going to be close. Georgia drives them down. They, both these teams have great defenses. They both have great offense. So they're both the complete package. I think they're the two best teams in the country. I'm going to take the dogs. I think they win 27 to 20. Now, so those are the picks. I want to give you my college football playoff picks. I'll give you my four teams. I'll tell you why I have each of those four teams. 
and then you can criticize. Now, last year, okay, last year I had SMU in the playoff. Laugh at me all you want. I didn't know other conferences were planning on having games. So just kind of leave me alone on that, please. Um, I didn't know other conferences were playing games. Like, I didn't know the Big Ten was playing games. If I knew that, I would have had Ohio State. I didn't, I didn't know that. So, last year, Mickey Mouse season. I mean, not Mickey Mouse season, but, like, for picks, it was a Mickey Mouse. Like, like how am I supposed to know what's going to happen? Like, like, come on. This year, we'll have a little bit of an idea. Now, the team I just said, who is going to win? Georgia. I think they'll go undefeated. And I think they will win the SEC. They're most likely going to play either Bama or Texas A&M in the SEC Championship. I think they win that game. I think they're better than both of those teams. So I have Georgia as my number one team. I don't see anyone at the moment as good as Georgia. They are the legitimate. They are the full package. I like the dogs. They're my first team. And the second team is the aforementioned Clemson. They are also extremely legit. I mean, they're they're also terrific. Now, Georgia is one of only two. I only have two teams going undefeated. Well, okay, Coastal Carolina or Lafayette might, but I don't think they'll have enough to get into the playoff. The two teams I have going undefeated are Georgia and Cincinnati. Now, there's a problem with Cincinnati we'll get to in a second. My third playoff team comes out of the Big 12. Um, you, you, you know who it is. It's Oklahoma. Psych! Got you there. I don't think Oklahoma is better than Iowa State. I think Iowa State is better than them. And here's what I think will happen. I think Oklahoma will beat Iowa State in the regular season. But I think Oklahoma loses to Oklahoma State last game of the season, which means you have an Iowa State versus Oklahoma. They're both 11-1. and one. Winner goes to the playoffs. Iowa State gets their revenge from the Big 12 championship last year. And plus, this is going to be the last time they play Oklahoma. They're leaving the Big 12. This game is going to mean a lot to Iowa State. They're going to go out and get it done. Now, this fourth spot, there are some contenders we have here. I think North Carolina will go undefeated throughout the regular season. The only tough team they play is Miami. And I think they're better than Miami. But I think they lose to Clemson in the ACC championship. So they'd be 11-1, and no conference championship. I think USC will win the big the, the Pac-12 with one loss. I don't think they'll go undefeated. I think they'll, they'll lose one game and win the Pac-12. Now, here's where it gets interesting. I think Cincinnati goes undefeated. I think they beat Notre Dame and Indiana. I think they're better than both those teams, and I think they win. The problem is, will they have enough to get in the playoff? Because there's two other teams. Texas A&M and Alabama. Remember that game I said earlier? It's going to be the game of the year. I think Texas A&M beats Alabama. I think they beat Alabama, and they may and they because that's going to be their big one of their biggest games in program history. I think they're going to go out and get it done. It's at Cal Field. That crowd is raucous, and they have a great defense with with that running back Isaiah Spiller. They can pound the run. They can control clock, and I'm going to say they upset Alabama. Now, okay, so I think they beat, but. I think AM will lose another game. I think they will lose to either LSU or Ole Miss. Because I think at that point, they'll be number one or two in the country, and the pressure's going to get to them, and they're going to fall to a team. But I think they win the SEC West and play Georgia in the SEC Championship. I think they lose to Georgia. So that puts them at two losses. And so I think that means they're out. So... Here are your here are your options. A one loss USC, a one loss North Carolina, but no conference title. One loss Alabama with no conference title. Or Cincinnati. Now, there's an obvious pick here, and it's Cincinnati. That scenario happened has happened way too many times. It happened last year. They didn't put Cincinnati in. I mean, Cincinnati almost beat Georgia, and Georgia's last year, Georgia's almost the same team they are this year. Last year, they played Georgia, almost beat them, but they lost. I think that game's going to loom in the committee's mind. I don't think they'll end up – they should put Cincinnati in, but the committee doesn't have a spine, and they won't put them in. The team, I think, that ends up making it by the skin of their teeth, again, a replay of 2017 when UCF should have made it, and they didn't because that was a one-loss Alabama. 
and they are going to make it in. I think Alabama is going to make it. Even though this should be Cincinnati, the same thing happened to UCF. And I think Alabama is going to get in. So this is my playoff. Uh, Georgia, Clemson, Iowa State, and Alabama. Now, I'll start with Clemson, Iowa State. It'll be a good game. But Clemson is, they're better than Iowa State. And they have playoff experience. That's what I think will get them this win. Um, they've been here before. Uh, uh, what's it called? Dabo Sweeney's been here, what, seven times before, it feels like. So I think Clemson will win this game. And on the other side, Georgia and Alabama, we've seen this before. Not in the playoff. Well, yes, in the playoff. They win the national championship, not in the semifinal. Which will be interesting. Will they make a bowl game with the two teams from the same conference? I don't know. Maybe. They did that with like some nobody potato bowl. They had two Mountain West teams. I think this is going to be close. But I think Georgia, the best team in the SEC. Like I said, I think they're number one. These two teams, I think, are... I think it's Georgia, Clemson, and then there's that second echelon. I think Georgia wins this game. And oh, look. We have a rematch from week one. Which is what? From Saturday, I think their teams are going to meet again in the national title game. And this game is going to be interesting. It's going to be down to the wire. But I think ultimately, for the same reasons Georgia will win week one, they will win the national title. For the first time since that day. If Georgia doesn't win this, I'm never picking them ever again. Because this, ha this is the year Georgia gets it done. I'm sorry. I'm a believer in Georgia this year. I really think they're just, I think they're great. Two people. I think Lee Corso had them winning. And who's the other guy? Not Herb Street. Not, De not, not Desmond Howard. The other guy. He went to Georgia. He also had them. Um, but I'm telling you, man, I'm a big believer in the dogs this year. I think Georgia wins the national championship. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's week one. It's a new season. Um, I will be streaming. All day Saturday. Hope you guys have fun. I will see you next time.